I did get an opportunity to really address this uh, yesterday, just briefly on my own radio show. And I, I did, didn't get a chance to say anything on video, but I do want to make a couple of comments about the health situation of Rush Limbaugh, who despite pretty much saying on Monday morning that he's been given a death sentence because his stage four lung cancer apparently is not responding to treatment any longer, was still able to close his show joking with his audience about the uh, suspension of Jeffrey Tubin, who had an issue of his own while he was involved with a Zoom call the other day. And then I listened to some of Limbaugh Tuesday. And again, the humor is still there. Here's a man who, who is possibly dying, and at least the cards are very much stacked against him. And he is still at the top of his game. I worked for a fellow many, many years ago named Steve Kamadi. And Steve Kamadi was infamous as the guy who fired Oprah Winfrey in Baltimore. He used to tell me I didn't fire her. I just moved her to a different show. But Steve would tell me that the key indicator of broadcast talent he said, look at one of my main anchors right now. He said, when she gets the flu, she could be anchoring the news and no one would know she had the flu. He said, that's the real definition of talent is that you're able on your best day to conjure this, we'll call it charisma in the case of someone like Limbaugh. But even on his worst day, Rush is still doing the same thing. That to me is an amazing ability. And, and so few people actually have it. I first heard Rush at a promo actually many, many years ago. I was working at a radio station in Syracuse, New York, and we were a little late to the game. Some of our competitors up and down the New York State Thruway were already airing the program, and somebody decided we should we should add it to our lineup as well, and we eventually ended up moving in the direction of conservative talk. At the time, we had more block programming, a mix of music, some news, actually quite heavy on news, and then people like Bruce Williams, they were doing talk, but it was a different, obviously, type of talk. It was investment talk. Dr. Dean Adele, who was talking about health, and then Larry King late at night. Rush Limbaugh changed the whole playing field in talk radio and really created the conservative talk radio format. I don't think he set out to do it, but he also saved the AM radio dial. Uh, we were really the only big AM left in the city that I happened to be working in at the time. Many had already just, it, we, we called it going dark. They simply shut the signals off because they could no longer compete as music outlets, not with the rise of A or FM radio, which came along really big in 1980 when FM really became standard in most automobiles. I, I heard Limbaugh in the promos, and that, that was Limbaugh talking about putting a condom on his microphone, and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to make of this guy, but then I started listening to him. I was, I was, as a friend of mine once called me, I was the roving reporter. I had a live unit, and I would travel all around the region and report on breaking news, big court cases, and the like. So I got to listen to Rush a lot in the car, and I wasn't nearly as conservative then. I guess I was a lot less political. My life revolved much more around football and hanging out with my friends when I wasn't working. But listening to Limbaugh, it was actually quite clever. And, and, and I'll never forget running into a friend who he'd left the television industry. He'd been a longtime TV news executive. And he said, I was driving through North, North Carolina, or maybe it was South Carolina. And he said, I hear this show, and there's an animal rights update. And I hear born free and gunshots. And I thought to myself, who is this guy? And my, my buddy Andy said, I'm not so sure that I was in agreement with anything Limbaugh was saying, but I was transfixed by the program. Rush saved the AM radio dial. Rush is also, in my view, the greatest, not just radio talk show host of all time, but the greatest broadcaster of all time because the longevity and how he has been able over three decades plus to build this. But my real... Real worry now is for the rest of us who I found Second Life as a radio talk show host. I worked in news for many, many years. And then when I really was exhausted with news in the direction of mainstream media, I needed a change. And talk radio, voila, it was there. And I thank Rush Limbaugh for creating that opportunity. And a lot of other people around the country are thanking him as well. But I, I would put it this way. This has been an epic. That is E-P-O-C-H. This has been an epic during the 30-some years of Rush Limbaugh's run on radio. There is simply nothing, no one, that could step in and replace the man and do it nearly as well. There's some very good talent out there. Uh, Glenn Beck always comes to mind. Mainstream media likes to mock Beck, saying, well, he lost his TV show and is no longer a factor, which they're apparently unaware that Beck's on more than 400 radio stations nationwide. Uh, Beck's got quite a platform, more so than anybody working in mainstream media right now.
But if Rush were to go, he is still the anchor show. Uh, I was sharing with a friend the other day that if you have Sean Hannity, who follows Rush in most markets, if Rush is his lead in, Hannity's ratings are generally very good. But if, if you've got them split between a couple of different talk radio stations, then Hannity's ratings aren't nearly as good without Rush as a lead in. I had the, uh, the, the luck of actually following Rush for many, many years at a radio station in Delaware, where I was once told by the consultant that I was the only host who'd ever been in the job that could actually keep Rush's audience and grow it during the course of the afternoon, which was quite heartwarming. It was, I was glad to hear that. But I do pray for him. I, I pray for him daily when I first hear his voice uh, on the air, and I pray for him. And when I don't hear his voice on the air, when he can't be there, I pray as well, because then I'm very, very concerned about him and what he might be going through on that particular day. Even liberals out there who I'm sure despise him because of what he's meant, he, he, he coalesced a conservative movement. Not only was he the greatest broadcaster of all time, but he has been the leader of the conservative movement for decades in this country, bigger than Barry Goldwater ever was, Ronald Reagan ever was, William F. Buckley ever was. Rush has been bigger, uh, and, and just by the longevity, too. And so there's there's no replacing him, even if he, he 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 recovers, makes a miraculous recovery, and decides to do this for another five to ten years, there would still be nothing that could really replace him. We're also told that the talk radio audience is aging out. Young people have become well, from what I'm reading on various websites, reading the Daily Signal today from the Heritage Foundation, and it's about the growth of socialist clubs on college campuses. Young people are turning away from conservative values. And I just heard an interview with Victor Davis Hanson that he did yesterday, where he said, we're following along the same lines of what happened in classical Athens, Thebes, even the Roman Republic. The middle class disappears. Then you get a class that thinks that it deserves something from somebody else. The government tries to appease them by baking more bread and passing it out for free. And eventually it all comes crashing down. And that's what I mean when I say this is the end of an epic. This has been a, a truly, Rush has been a classroom for a great many people who are willing to listen. And if that's gone, then it's only going to accelerate whatever decline we may have. But again, I do pray because I always remember the line from, we have three fellows who do a program with us called Pastors Roundtable once a week. And they like to remind me that in the end, God wins. And so Rush has been a good soldier for him. Uh, let's just hope there's somebody else who can step in and fill those shoes. If you like our videos, click on the subscribe button above. You can also leave us a comment in the comment section below. And we all wish you a great day, as always.